As a seven-time funded founder with two exits, I've tried many more ideas for startups, and I've failed a whole bunch of times, and I always say that's to your benefit because I like to use these videos on my channel to help startups and early stage founders avoid a lot of the mistakes that I've made. There are a few mistakes that I really regret, and those have to do with wasting my time. And the reason is time is a finite resource, and once you spend it, you can't get it back. Money, not a problem. I've made a lot of mistakes with money. If you follow my channel, you've seen that I've lost a lot of money along the way, and that's just part of the founder journey. Time, I don't get time back. And every year that goes by, I become increasingly aware of the limited amount of time that I have left, which is the reason when I look back at where I regret wasting my time, it feels like a wasted life. That's how it hits me right in the feels, and I know I don't want to be hard on myself, but when I really think about it, I do have the regrets, and that's what I wanted to share with you in this video today. As of the time of this recording, I've advised over 560 startups, and I feel the pain when those founders make the same mistakes that I do when it comes to wasting their time, and again, that's the reason I wanted to make this video. So I'm gonna share the three biggest regrets that I have when it comes to wasting my time, and they're gonna go from the least regretful to the most regretful, and I hope that you can empathize and feel my pain Pain. Maybe you're experiencing the same thing and avoid the mistakes that I made and it's not that you can avoid making mistakes 100% of the time But I'm hoping that if you're at least aware that these mistakes are possible when you do start to fall into these little traps Catch yourself that the damage is going to be minimized and you're not going to go down a road that you can't come back Or what they call the one-way door, you know, it's a two-way door you can backtrack, you can make the adjustments and get back onto making sure your startup goes the way that you need it to and you're not wasting that valuable precious time. The first regret that I have is something called action faking. Now, when I first started on my entrepreneurial journey, I read a lot of books. I'm dating myself, I'm kind of dinosaur. YouTube just wasn't a thing back when I started my entrepreneurial career. So I began reading a lot of books. And these were books that were written by famous business people who promised you that if you just read the book and you follow the steps that you can get rich or make millions of dollars starting your own business. I read a lot of those books and I kept reading and I was a voracious reader. The issue was I fell into the trap of action faking. That's when you're taking action and it looks like that action is getting you towards your goal of becoming an entrepreneur and making a successful business, but it's just all fake. It looks like it on the surface, but really there's no substance and therefore no results. And I'm not trashing those books. A lot of those books have amazing principles. The issue was when those books were not matched with comparable action, real legitimate action, then it was just a waste of time. I think of it like fast food. It tastes good, easy to consume, but they're empty calories. And if you're not actually doing something with them, then it becomes a lot worse. The problem just compounds because you keep reading the books because you only get so far. And then what happens? You have to read another book because uh, you're thinking that you're missing something and the cycle goes on and on and on. The same thing happens today when it comes to YouTube videos or watching famous gurus or these entrepreneur experts who tell you to hustle and grind and use their special formula and you can get rich and set up a business in 24 hours or over a weekend or a week, etc. And it goes on and on. And because everything's so free and you can get it in bite-sized chunks that hits that dopamine cycle in your brain, you just keep eating and eating and eating those empty calories. And then pretty soon you don't know what to do because you're kind of frozen. You're in this stage of paralysis by analysis. You've just way too much information and the inertia takes over. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion, but objects at rest tend to stay at rest. And if you're not doing something with all those knowledge calories, those entrepreneurial knowledge nuggets that you're taking in, well then inertia is gonna take over and you'll be frozen. And I know way too many founders that end up getting too obsessed with learning about doing startups without actually doing startups. And I realize it's a little rich and ironic me saying this, but even individuals like me, if you keep consuming my videos and you don't actually go out and do stuff with them, you're gonna be in trouble and you're gonna regret wasting all that time. Now there is a solution to it. There's a way to take that knowledge and to apply it with people, with your peers, with mentors, advisors like me and say, I read this, I'm gonna try it and I'd like some feedback. I remember doing this with The Lean Startup by Eric Rice 
And that was so critical for me because I read the book while I was trying to do the startup. The other video series that really benefited me was How to Start a Startup by Stanford University, which is put on by Y Combinator. And I remember doing a startup while I was watching those videos. I'd watch one video and then I'd try and apply it to a startup at the exact same time. And I had a co-founder and we were wrestling with all the topics. And therefore that knowledge, those calories got put to work right away. It was like, you know, taking in a power shake or an energy drink before you go to the gym. And then you're really pumped up and you start working out and you become more and more fit. And those gains start to increase and the momentum starts to increase as well. And you feel really good about what you're doing because action creates more action and that flywheel effect starts to happen. So don't be that startup founder and end up action faking. You are going to regret it like I regret it when I look back. The second regret that I have is wasting my time with co-founders. And that may sound really weird, but I've had a lot of questionable co-founders in my day. Co-founders that I've just brought on because they're friends or it seemed convenient at the time or I didn't really think it through. They filled a gap that I could have easily hired for, but I thought, ah, oh, come on for co-founder equity because I can't pay you and I regret those mistakes because I end up spending a lot more time dealing with co-founder conflict and trying to motivate the co-founder to be productive and to carry the same amount of weight, but the same amount of emotional intensity and execution into the startup that I did. And most of the time it ended up just not working out and I saw the writing on the wall a lot earlier, but I ignored it because of different issues, emotional issues, fear of other people's opinions, wanting to retreat from conflict and avoid those awkward situations, trying to keep the peace. I'd go along just to get along. And that was just a bad idea. And it's something that I regret to this day because co-founders are great when things are going good, but when they're going bad, you want the co-founder to come and sit along on the same side of the table as you. The problem is if the co-founder starts dragging or creates tension, it just compounds the issue. It amplifies everything else. And that's the reason investors look for co-founder chemistry. They look for the history between the co-founders to make sure that while going is good, everybody's going to be fine. But when the going gets tough, do the tough get going? And a lot of investors that I know look for resilient co-founders. They look for co-founders and they want to know the challenges the co-founders have gone through and the challenges that the co-founders overcome and what type of culture they have between them, how much trust is there because they know if you're in for the long haul, it's like a marriage. It takes at least 10 years to exit a startup in a fantastic unicorn fashion that everybody wants. But if you don't have the foundation, just like any marriage, there's no foundation in that relationship. Those issues start to show up cracks start to form in the foundation and you can't build a startup on top of a faulty foundation. So I regret all those times that I ended up contractually obligated with a co-founder and we've had to unwind or I've had to leave. That's a huge regret. You don't want to end up in that spot. So pick your co-founders carefully. For that matter, pick every person that you work with carefully and make sure you're not wasting your time, that they are not draining and sucking the time out of you because that is a finite resource and eventually you're just going to end up bankrupt and everything is going to fall apart. You don't want to be in that situation. The third regret and the most regretful way that I've wasted my time is that I have not spent more time listening to users, my customers. There are so many times that I just made an assumption in my mind that that's what the customers wanted. That's what they would value. And I went ahead and did it. I invested money into it, especially when I had ample capital, when I had access to more capital, it seemed like I lost the discipline to really research and find out what the users wanted. There were times it went really great. There are times when I went to users and I said, what are the main things that you're looking for? What are the most painful pain points, the underserved pain points that nobody's helping you with and you would love me if I saw them for you and they would give it to me and I would build it as a feature, I'd ship that feature and things would go extremely well, be well received. I see that growth start to spike and we start building more success as we began listening because now my customers, my users trusted me and things went really well. But there were other times that I I just thought, okay, I have that problem or I have that perspective on the problem. So now I'm going to make my problem, everybody else's problem. And I'm going to make an assumption that everybody else values it the same way that I do. When really it came down to just ego. I thought I knew better than my customers. I thought to myself, well, I know what they want, but this is what they need. The issue is if it's not what they want, 
Well, they're not even going to be open to receiving what they need. And I had to spend way more time trying to convince customers to change their behavior or even try it to no avail, to no results, rather than give them something that they wanted and they were in expectation of me giving to them. And that's the reason I'm so big on when I talk to founders, I tell them, have you talked to your users? Go test it. Go find out what they think. Now it's up to you to go into the market and validate because you have an assumption. I have an assumption and we both are probably wrong right out of the gate. How do we find out? Go talk to the people who are actually going to use the solution and pay for it. I don't want to regret lost time. I don't want to feel like I've wasted my life as a startup founder only to end up lost. Where some people describe you climb this ladder of success and you find out it's leaning on the wrong wall and now you're so committed, you're so high on that ladder. What do you do? And that's where the regret sets in. Hope this has been helpful. I'm going to put on the screen two other videos I think you'd be interested in watching after you watch this one as far as the regrets that I've had and how I've lost money and I get very personal and transparent. If you like this type of stuff, please do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe. Your feedback is tremendously helpful. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments and I appreciate it once again. Thank you for giving me this opportunity just to be real and transparent with what I go through and my regrets and my vulnerabilities. I'll see you in the next video.